Close your eyes and picture this, chess kids. It's the year 2030, and you are playing for the world championship. You're probably playing in Alaska, the only comfortable place left after global warming. But never mind that. Who's your opponent? Well, it might still be Magnus Carlsen. That's right. Who's to say he's not still going to be world champion when you are fighting for the title? And if you're going to beat Magnus, you need to know how he plays. Today, we're going to learn how Magnus wins. And there's one main thing he does. He never gives up. Seems easy to say, right? But watch in action hmm. how he can take a position that looks like there's no winning chances. And, well, he just finds a way. In this position, he's black, and he starts out with what seems like a pretty boring continuation. He trades knights, oh. he trades pawns. Oh. We have rook and four against rook and four. All the pawns are on one side. Nobody's pawns are weak or isolated or anything like that. Most grandmasters would just call it a day. They'd have a handshake, they'd go for dinner, they'd come back the next day. But not Magnus. If he sees even a little scrap, a little scintilla of a chance, he'll go for it. And he recognized in this position, this pawn on e5 is a little bit by himself. Now it's best play, this should be a draw. But when you're Magnus, if there's no risk, you keep playing on. He actually played for a hundred moves in this game. We're not going to take a look at all of them, but the next move is key. Rook to c4. Now that prevents white from being able to play pawn to f4 to support this pawn, at least for the moment. So white plays king to g3 to be able to get his pawn to f4. But after e6 and f4, then Magnus decides to try to break down the base of the pawn chain to go after the f4 pawn. So he plays h6, gives a little check, and then plays g5. And suddenly, this is not so easy for white. No. You can't play g3 because after I trade pawns, I hope you see what's coming next. My rook would come over and take the h3 pawn. So, unfortunately for white, oh. he had to trade. Oh. And now the pawn is isolated. He slowly worms his king in the game. That's going to be a major theme of our topic today. After king to h6, he then gets his king to h5. He sneaks his king around, and although we're not going to take a look at oh. all of the moves, oh. you can see very clearly in this position that the king will eventually get to f5 and be able to surround this pawn. Rook and two versus rook and one. He went on to win. Magnus never gives up. Let's take a look at another very close ending of his. In fact, this one took place at a world championship match. If you count the material, he's up two pawns, but he has a problem. White has the more active rook, and white has the more active king. Magnus uses a lot of the chess kid lessons, including breakthrough and king activity, to be able to pull off a win out of nowhere. He starts with rook to e6, giving away one of his pawns just to activate his rook. Now, he's only up one pawn. He gives a check. Okay, we can see he successfully activated his king. Then he plays h4, giving his king a little shelter once he gets checked. Check. And when the rook moves over, now the question is, how do we improve our position? He starts with rook f4. The f pawn ends up being the key pawn. He doesn't want to lose that one. And after rook to c8, he plays rook to g4. He's slowly making progress. It does take a while. Rook to g3 check. And now he activates the king with king to g5. Now white really wants to play rook c8 to pick off the pawn, but he doesn't want to allow the rook to come back to g4 to defend the pawn. So white very cleverly throws check. in a check. And when the king moves, then he comes across to c8. Now white is actually going to be not down material at all, but black activated his king and his rook. After king to oh. e3, now how do we make a passed pawn? Well, we've got these two against this one. And if you watched our lessons video on breakthrough, I think you know what's coming next. After f4, white played rook to a4, and then another pawn sacrifice, h3. And after oh. captures, Magnus finally got his passed pawn. Now don't push it yet, you'll hang your rook. He first saves his rook, and the f-pawn is just too strong. c4, f3, yeah. give a little check. King e2, b4, here comes the pawn. Rook a2 yeah. check. Now black does have to dance around a few checks here after king f3, rook a3 yeah. check. The king comes to f4. Rook to a8, and don't promote to a queen too quickly, because rook to f8 would skewer your king and your queen. No. You actually could promote to knight. That'd be kind of funny, right, because it's check. But... I don't know that it's winning. So it's actually better to save the promotion and just play rook to g1. And eventually, after a few more checks, black is going to get the queen with the protection of the rook. And Magnus went on to win this game and eventually the world championship as well. This next one, we're going to go through kind of quickly. He's actually up a pawn. Wow, big surprise, right? He's going to keep an extra pawn. But it's all about fighting, fighting, fighting. And it turns out king activity is key here as well. 
So he first guards his extra pawn with his king, and then he eventually uses the knight to do that job. Now the bishop runs around, and the bishop attacks the pawn. That makes the knight frozen in time. The knight cannot move, or else the extra pawn is gone. So look what Magnus does. It looks like white can just sort of sit still and do nothing and create a fortress, but we've seen our chess kid video on fortresses. Sometimes you can break them down. And look what black does. He brings his king all the way around the world. Look at this. The king goes all the way to the other side of the board. And then the knight comes in. Check. The knight gives a check. check. The knight gives another check. check. And after a couple of pawns oh, trade, which you're oh. about to see, then the king finally makes his way to h2. Magnus picked off this pawn. And with three against one and the knight able to come to a2 and double attack the g4 pawn, Magnus went on to win. I don't want you to think that Magnus only wins games that look equal. Sometimes he wins games that are lost. In our final example, he was white in this position. There's a lot going on, but he played the incredible blunder G4, losing a piece out of the opening. Because after F4, that disconnects the bishop's protection of the knight, and the queen's just going to take. Magnus is down a piece for nothing, really, but look at what he's able to do. He creates counterplay by first saying, you know what, if I'm behind, I should just start chucking my pieces at your king. After oh. queen takes, notice this knight is pinned. Then the queen comes to the square c5, all kinds of attack on this knight. Black needs to defend that knight, and he chooses so with bishop to b7. Okay, the knight saves himself, and here come the line opening maneuvers. Now normally, when you're behind, you would avoid a trade of queens. But in this position, white can actually allow the trade and just play g5. Look at how he's ripping open the black king. And you better not trade queens, because if you do... Oh. I'll take back with my knight. I'm forking your rook and your bishop, and something very funny would happen. When you save your rook and protect your bishop, I'd make a trade, and then because my bishop is so powerful, I would take with my rook, and after I take back, my bishop's threatening your whole army. In fact, if you block with your rook, I would probably play pawn takes pawn, and if you guard your rook, I would take this rook and I would do it to you again. And this bishop is like a magical, magical piece. Okay, anyway, that didn't happen in the game. If we go back to the position after the move G5, black decided to capture oh. and now white kept the queens on the board. We're gonna hustle through the remaining moves here oh. and just show you how Magnus picked off oh. a pawn. Oh. Then he opened up the H file. Oh. He eventually gets his knight to an awesome square. You better not take that knight because if you do, only bad things will happen you'll actually lose your entire army after queen takes rook check, okay? So instead, the queen slid over. White put his rook on the same file as the king. I just want to show you one more idea. Black was actually so frustrated with his bishop not being able to do anything and the strength of this bishop pinning the knight, he decided to offer his own rook for a bishop, but Magnus realizes it's all about activity of pieces, not just points. Magnus played the move queen to c5, keeping his bishop on the board. And I'm just going to show you one final move. After knight to e4, Magnus went on to win because knight to f6 is a very funny threat because your bishop and your knight are actually both pinned. It'd be a fork of your king and your queen. Sure, Magnus is down a piece, but is this bishop really doing anything? No. This knight is pinned. This bishop is pinned. This rook is out of the game. All of white's pieces are happy, and Magnus went on to win in about 10 more moves. You want to play like Magnus? If you want to play for the world championship, you have to never give up.